It is Thursday's MUTV group chat. You are very welcome indeed. Lovely to have you with us. Um, as usual, we've got Ben here, we've got Maisie, we've got Danny, and we've got Wes. Hi again, guys. How are you? Anything different to say from yesterday? No. <laughs> Same stuff, different day. Well, the good news is yesterday's show was with Rafa was wildly popular. Um, uh, lots and lots of comments on YouTube and lots of views as well. Clearly, he's a hugely popular player. I'm going to go through a few of them. This one says, my favourite United right back, right back. Raphael, love the guy. Wish he was still in Manchester. This one, seeing Rafa puts a smile on my face. What passion he had. This one from Tom. Raphael was fun to watch. He was like Eric on the wings. Raphael was young, but bully on the pitch. Miss you, mate. You'll always be red. This one, invite Cristiano to the MUTV group chat, please. And it's an open invitation. Cristiano, not easy to get in. Can we have Sir Alex or Poppy Chalm? Again, it's an open invitation. Can you sort that out, Maisie, Sir Alex or Bobby? Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll send a text now. Yeah? Yeah. See what you can do. Yeah. Oh, have you texted Roy yet? Have you texted Roy yet? Can we get, no? I've texted Keeney. I've not even got a reply yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's on total lockdown. <laughs> changed his number. Must have changed his number. Probably. I thought he was blanking me. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the latter. Yeah. Well, listen, um, our guest today was part of the class of 92, had a terrific career in the game for, for the club and country. Great character as well, as we're going to find out. Keith Gillespie joins us. Morning, Keith. How are you doing, mate? Hi, Stuart. How's it going? You all right? Yeah, good, good. Lockdown? Is family well? Everyone okay? Yeah, everyone good. But, you know, it's a, it's a pretty challenging time for everyone, so we're all in the same boat. Yeah. And these four reprobates we have on the show, I guess you'll know all of them. And you could probably yes. dish the dirt. Can you dish the dirt on all of them? <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think I can say too much on air. Uh, <laughs> but you know what, Maisie's he's like. You know, you, you know what he's been up to over the years. Uh, ben, I room, I room with Ben, so um, I, you know, I, I, can't say, I can't say too much to him yet. And um, I never played with Wes. I played with Danny at Sheffield United, but uh, I played with Wes in. Uh, in sort of these sort of legend games that we uh, we play on, so yeah, no, we have uh, we have a good fun when we all meet up. He can't he can't let you get in past rooming with Ben. I mean, surely there's something you can something you can tell us. <laughs> He's probably got more to say about me. That's uh, very true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, lots to chat about in your in your career. Um, before we do that, I just wanted guys to get your reaction to the news last night that Premier League players have all um, come together to launch this initiative to generate funds for the NHS. Called, they call it Players Together. Uh, it's basically set up to help frontline staff. And maybe that's the perfect answer to people like uh, Matt Hancock or others who've criticised Premier League players. But guys, what do, you, what do you think of that? All the players have, have thought about it, taken their time, they've come together, they've taken decisive action. What do you make of this new scheme they've come up with? No, I think it's fantastic, Stu. You know, it's great that um, they've all come together as one. And it's exactly what us five would have done um, in days gone by. It's about, you you know, staying together, doing what the players want to do as well, uh, of where the money wants to go. Not let it go fritting away other places. Uh, I think it's a fantastic cause and, uh, you know, well done to everybody that's been involved. Yeah, the same really what Maisie said. You know, we've been in lockdown for two weeks now. It's probably been about three weeks since it all started. And um, like we we did talk about, it, it does take a little bit of time. But I think they've done it um, quick enough. And, and now they know where the money's going. I think everyone's happy. Yeah, yeah Ben, Danny, I mean, the, the people who criticise players, Premier League players, I mean, that's, that's the perfect answer to those people, isn't it? Yeah, it was premature, Stuart. And I think, you know, like Wes said, we've all touched on it in the in the time that we've been doing this, that um, football was always going to come under scrutiny. But, you know, to the extent that it did in the short time that it did, I thought was, was extremely unfair. And I think we all thought that given a little bit of time, something like this was always going to come out. Um, and yeah, the timescale's been been you know quicker than I expected. And, and, and what they're doing is, is absolutely fantastic to help the NHS. Yeah. I, I think as well, you know, normally the PFA 
you'd expect them to come and rally the players around and get them to do something about it. But if I'm honest, I think the players are fed up. Um, fed up of the sitting and waiting for the PFA to act and this and, and, and acting in the way that they want them to act. So I think now the players have got the strength and got themselves together. It's just another example of the good characters we do have in the game, despite what the media try and, you know, try and pin against certain footballers. So, no, you know, fair play. And I just think it's the, um, it's a good foot forward. Yeah. Keith is decisive action, isn't it, from the players? It is, yeah. You know, it's, I think it was a little bit unfair with what Matt Hancock was coming out with. Um, and now the players have, have reacted to that in, in the best possible way. Um, you know, I think with, with the NHS, you know, these people are risking their lives for, for a lot of people at this time. And it's very important that they get, you know, the right uh, the right bag and with, with, you know, things like this, with, um, you know, events and, and stuff to try and raise money for them. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a great scheme. Players together. And um, yeah, that is the perfect answer to, to some of the critics. So keep with us today. Keep, I mean, we're all on lockdown, so we all have a lot of time to think. But I just think when you, obviously you were part of the class of 92 when you came over from, from Northern Ireland, what were those experiences like? I mean, you had some unbelievable players, some unbelievable characters. Do you ever look back, think about them? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's probably a bit of a one-off in terms of that side that we had that, that year in terms of the players that came through. Um, it was a fantastic side to, to be a to be a part of, and I, I think in terms of the ones that came through, we, we pretty much all helped each other because we were in and out at times with first team squads. But you know, if we, I don't think we'd have, we'd have progressed as quickly without being in that youth team as a, as, a, as a group. You know, getting to the first team. Um, you know, and you only have to look at the names that, that, that came through and the, and the careers that we went on to have. When you came over as well, I mean, obviously a young, talented winger coming over from Northern Ireland, were you saddled with the new George Best thing? Yeah, I think that's just natural. Um, I think I'll probably try to emulate him off the pitch rather than on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's just something natural that happens to any young lad from, from Northern Ireland, you know, that comes over and... Obviously, with me being a winger like like George Best himself, the, the comparisons were a little bit more. But you know, it's it's something that you, as I say, any Northern Ireland player that, that comes to Man United gets. I'm sure people in the, before me, your likes of your Sammy McElroy's, your, your Norman Whitesides players like that, had that same thing. You know, it's just the, it's just the way it is in terms of what a what a great icon George Best was. You know, around the world, but particularly here in in, in Northern Ireland. But do you think, in the, in the end, obviously, you didn't play that often for the first team before going to Newcastle as part of the, 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 the Andy Cole deal. Well, then you had Konchelskis out of you, and I suppose Beckham ahead of you. I mean, it was that, it was just one of those things, I guess. Yeah, I, I think in, when I did leave, the, the, they had the European rule at that time as well, where, you know, being from Northern Ireland, you were classified as, uh, as a foreigner. And you could, you could only play three foreigners, and uh, I think it was called the two assimilated players at the time. Um, so when I, when I did leave, you know, it came out of the blue, but it, it, it was pretty much because they needed to get an English striker in and Andy Cole fitted the bill. Um, as you say, I had Andre in front of me, who at the, I left in the January and at the end of that season he left. And I, I did get a call um, from Sir Alex when I come back. Um, so they did put a bid in to bring me back six months later, but uh, Newcastle turned that down. So things could have been different. David Beckham, obviously, you know, played on on the on the on the right side then, where he was more a central midfielder, and um, so you know that's how it happened at that at that time. I suppose that says a lot about what the manager thought of you that he wanted you he wanted to bring you back. Now, you had a great time at Newcastle. Would you have, would you have come back? Well, I mean, the thing about this when Sir Alex Ferguson rings in and, and asks you would you come back, you're not, you're not going to say no. Um, the, the the way I found out that they they had come in for me was. Um, it was it was um, Gary Neville that told me, you know, because he would he would have seen um, the likes of Peter Beardsley on on England trips and and Peter was very close to Kevin Keegan. So I mean, I wouldn't have been one to go knocking on on manager's door and, and demanding leaves and all that there. And you know, to be fair, um, that was the start of the ninety five ninety six season, and I, I played in that great Newcastle side then that they. Had, became known as the entertainers and you know had four great years up there so no I, I mean I wouldn't have changed that. Keith you had, well, you had obviously had a really good career but I, I, I've, I've read your incredibly honest searingly honest autobiography a few years ago when you look now I mean do you have any regrets 
or or do you think that's a hell of a that was a hell of a life? No, I, you know, it's it's a, I think it's a question that I would get asked quite a lot, you know, because with the autobiography and and you know, as you say, with the truthfulness, you know, I, I wanted to be you know right out there with the, the honesty, and I think you get more credibility with with being like that, uh, but. You know, I was very fortunate, and like all the lads, you know, we're, we're very fortunate that we were actually be able to make it as footballers in terms of that was our job, you know, because there's so many people who don't get that opportunity. Um, and, and when you look back, there's so many people would have wanted to, to have been in your shoes in terms of the playing for the clubs that you, that you did do. Um, so I'm, I'm a great believer in every, everything happens for a reason, um, you know, so, you know, you, you can't change the past. Um, so there's no point in, in, in dwelling on it and having any regrets. What about this, the gambling side of things? Uh, is it still an issue? For, I mean, there, there was incredible figures in that book. I've lost 47,000 in an afternoon. There was some assessment you might have lost overall millions, seven million. I, don't, I mean, is it still no, an issue I, for you? Oh, oh gosh, not at all. Um, I think... I'll, I'll, a lot of the problem in the early days was a bit of boredom. Um, you know, when I actually went to Newcastle, the first five, six months, I lived in a hotel there, and I'm sort of 19 years of age, and you're in a strange city. You know, you finish training by half 12 every day, and, and you know, unlike the rest of the players, you're going home to wives and families, and, and what have you, I'm going home to an empty hotel room. So the, the, the actual um, gambling overtook even even more um you're in there every single afternoon but you know that's that's well under control now i think as you get older you i like to think you get a little bit wiser um you know yeah i have the odds bet here and there in terms of a, a, on a on a saturday um just being a, a football coupon what's basically laughing at um it's not fucking <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, it's not something I do anymore and the horses were, were, the, were the big problem and that's not something I get involved in at all now the, the horse racing but if that I mean mental health is a huge thing now it, and it wasn't really mentioned in your peak of your playing time would it have been different now you know Could it, would, it, would, it, would it have been different for you now uh, yeah probably would have been you know as you said I think back then you know in terms of mental health was a big taboo topic uh, where it's it's a little bit more open now. Um, the same with the same with gambling. Uh, you know, gambling wasn't sort of as bad as what people you know uh, determine it is now. Um, you could sort of get it. You know, the fact that I was sort of betting on football back back then. You know, you're not allowed to bet on any football at all now as a, as a professional footballer. So it was a little bit more lax then. Um, you know, so I think just uh, it's it's. Just normal, everything in life as as time goes on, things things get different. Um, you know, and back then, you know, as I say, it was a taboo topic, but it's a little bit different now. Oh, glad you're doing well, mate. Glad you're doing well. Um, something we're also asking all our guests on the show is to pick their own six aside team from players that you played with at United. Bear in mind, who's on this? Who's on this call? No. Players you played with at United, if you had to pick a six aside team, Keith, you can be in it. No, I wouldn't be in it. <laughs> um, I think, uh, well, I think you obviously have to have Big Peter and goals. Uh, defensively, uh, gosh, I'd have Dennis in because Dennis is Mr. Reliable. Um, midfield, uh, sorry, you'd have two at the back. Uh, I'd have Dennis and, and I'm probably Gaz. You know, they're quite dependable. Uh, midfield, uh, probably Roy and, and Scrolzy. Um, and up front, uh, Giggsy and probably Eric. That's, no one's ever picked Gary Neville in their six side team. What do you think about that? I've seen him. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I suppose I'm just thinking about how reliable he was it on a on a Saturday. Um, I wasn't really taking into account his his performances in training. Uh, should have maybe rethought that, but who did I? So you've already changed it then. Yeah. Yeah, I think you might have had seven in there as well. To be honest with you. Um, oh, you're right, actually. <laughs> yeah. So we'll drop Gary, should we? Yeah, yeah. drop Gary. There okay. we go. Just Sorry about that. Dennis. Sorry about that. Okay. 
<laughs> um, just one thing we're going to do tomorrow, lads. Uh, we're going to, just because Skulls and Neville have done it recently, we're going to bring back the um, the toilet roll keepy up challenge. And we want to know which one of you, which one of you guys is going to do an, is going to do the most keepy ups. No money, so people I'm are going to vote. People are people are going to vote on Manchester United app to decide who they think will do the most keepy ups tomorrow. Of you guys. Keith, if if you had to, uh, I, I always I won't say if you had to bet, but if you did have to bet on who would who would do the most keepy ups of these guys, who would you go for? Web. Webs, with a load of doubt. Hey, he's pressure, pressure. I would said Webs. Easy, Webs. Got... Webs or Ben? I haven't got any. No. <laughs> <Definitely>. Really? <laughs> do we do the baby wipes? Kitchen roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's my feet, yeah. What are you using then, mate? Well, I don't know. I'll have to, have to go in the bin and get some old gear out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, uh, Keith, first of all, you've been a great guest. Thank you so much. For Cheers, thanks, mate. Sure. See you guys. Thanks, Keith, Keith, mate. Keith. Keith. Got my Keith. Got my Keith. Thanks for coming, Nick. Um, we've got fan. We've got fan, fan of the week as well tomorrow uh, with us. And, of course, the, the Keep You Up Challenge, which you must see. And um, the overhead kick, the Wayne Rooney overhead kick, that's winning. Match rewind, you'll see that game um, 7 pm on the Manchester United app, that Manchester Derby game. Chaps, see you tomorrow. Good Friday, but it didn't matter. It's bank holiday, we're still there. See you tomorrow, guys.